Good morning, everyone. My name is Fran. I'm a data science lead at Uber. Uh, before joining Uber about three and a half years ago, I did a postdoc at Caltech doing approximate quantum dynamics. Uh, since starting at Uber, I founded a couple of our sequence teams, including our real-time anomaly detection team, uh, forecasting platform team, and also recently our natural language processing efforts. Um, so here are the three key takeaways for this talk. I'll be touching on some of the popular forecasting methodologies. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance of backtesting in order to compare various different forecasting methods, as well as prediction intervals, which are critical in order to understand and give uh, actionable business insights. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to also give you a glimpse of some of the cutting edge work that we're doing in the forecasting realm at Uber. So forecasting is truly ubiquitous, no matter which business you're in, whether this is in finance, um, in manufacturing, uh, or also, for example, meteorology. Not surprisingly, also at Uber, we have a plethora of different forecasting use cases. And here I'm showing uh, three of the many forecasting uh, use cases that we have. Uh, the first one being marketplace forecasting. Uh, here we are predicting both supply and demand and a couple of other quantities as well at a very fine granular spatiotemporal fashion. And we do this in order to uh, direct driver partners into high demand areas uh, that will be arising shortly. Uh, the second use case I want to touch on is our intelligent real-time anomaly detection stack. Anyone in their career has been on on-call in this room? Yes, quite a few people. It's pretty painful setting up alerts, getting woken up in the middle of the night just to find out that it's not a true system issue. We have been working at Uber at cutting edge forecasting techniques that successfully uh, can give extremely high signal to noise ratios and that we can track um, various different uh, time series, both in terms of back end as well as consumer facing time series at scale. Uh, this is a very uh, large scale problem. We have over 500 million metrics that we're tracking at Uber. The third use case I want to call out is our hardware capacity forecasts. Um, these are particularly important because Uber is such a large business nowadays. We cannot just double or triple our hardware for special events such as Halloween or New Year's Eve and call it a day. That would be fiscally totally irresponsible. At the same time, we also cannot under provision because this would potentially lead to outages and uh, would might uh, lead uh, to eroded trust of our rider and driver partners. So really it's about the Goldilocks principle, not too much and not too little hardware. Uh, this again is a very challenging task as we have to forecast minute by minute, multiple months in advance, often special events that only occur once a year. And given that Uber is uh, such a young company, uh, this is uh, very challenging overall. So um, let's, how do we tackle forecasting problems? The first thing I typically do uh, is some exploratory analysis. Whenever I can, I, I visualize the data that I'm working with. One of the things about um, time series is that typically have some underlying patterns. Uh, here's some uh, airline passenger data uh, from the 1950s uh, over a couple of years. And as you can see, you have some underlying trend going up and to the right, my favorite kind of graph. Um, and then there is some seasonality that overlaps that, in this case, an annual seasonality. So forecasting methods need to be able to capture and model uh, such underlying patterns. So what are the prominent forecasting methodologies uh, that exist? There are two types of classes. One are the classical statistical approaches that have been around for decades. You might have heard of ARIMA as well as Holt Winters. I also included here the Theta method, uh, which is typically a less well-known technique, uh, but has won the M3 competition, a very famous international forecasting competition. It is computationally very inexpensive, and we found it to be uh, extremely useful uh, for Uber time series. Now, in recent years, also machine learning and deep learning uh, techniques have been uh, coming into the forecaster's toolkit more and more. Uh, for example, the quantile regression forest, a cousin of the well-known random forest, um, as well as recurrent neural networks have been promising on this field. Recurrent ne neural networks have been particularly useful uh, if a lot of data is available and you don't have any uh, interpretability constraints. Now, uh, which of these and many other models will be the best one for your forecasting use case depends on a multitude of different factors, including on how much historic data is available and what your business constraints are. For example, does the method need to be interpretable? 
So there is no real way to actually forecast which of these forecasting techniques is the best. And so one actually needs to compare multiple different approaches. So how does one do that? Um, note here that we have to do chronological testing. The ordering in time series is extremely important. So you cannot take out a chunk in the middle of your time series and train on the before and after data of that and test in the middle. That would be cheating. What we need to do is we have to train on a time series um, uh, of events up to a certain point and then test subsequently. So there are two uh, major approaches, the sliding window approach as well as the expanding window approach. And the name really says it all. In the sliding window approach, you take a fixed uh, window of training data, here shown in black, that you move forward at every single pass. And then you test on the orange data. Now for the expanding window approach, which is particularly useful if you have very little data available, you actually expand the training data from pass to pass, as, in, as indicated here in black. You don't drop any of the data points. And again, you test on a, an orange uh, window that is fixed. Now, in terms of the evaluation metrics of comparing various different time series methodologies, there is quite a few out there, both absolute as well as percentage ones. The one I want to call out in particular that I think is very useful is to compare to a naive forecast. So what's a naive forecast? That basically means that you assume that today's value will hold for tomorrow, for example. And so you have a nice baseline that you can compare more complex algorithms to. So we have a blueprint now for understanding what the, the best forecasting methodology is for your forecasting use case. Uh, but wait, there is more. In order to make good, actionable business decisions, you also need to have an estimation of what the uncertainty is around your forecast. Um, and here is where prediction intervals come into play. Prediction intervals basically give you the probability um, of your forecasted value to be within the forecasting prediction intervals versus outside of them. So an 80% prediction interval would mean that you have an 80% probability that they would be within the prediction intervals versus exceeding them. Now, in this example that I'm showing here, a uh, hypothetical example, uh, you can see that the point forecasts shown in purple are exactly the same between both of these scenarios. However, the prediction intervals um, are extremely different from one another. In the left-hand side graph, they're much, much more narrow, whereas in the right-hand side graph, they're much, much more broader. So now if we come back to hardware capacity planning and you want to have an equal certainty of not exceeding your hardware limit, you would have to provision much more hardware in the right-hand side graph. So now that we've covered some of the fundamentals um, of forecasting, I would like to touch briefly on some of the cutting edge work that we're doing in this domain. In particular, we're focusing on uh, event forecasting at Uber. Events are extremely frequent uh, within the Uber ecosystem, whether it's concerts, holidays, sporting events, weather uh, that is happening, and they can have huge effects on our business metrics. Here's an example of how thunderstorms in a particular city cost 3x demand. So the problem is with the classical approaches and statistical approaches that have been around for decades is that adding exogenous variables is often not possible. One of the exceptions is ARIMA, and even there we find that it is not working very well. So enter recurrent neural networks. Um, this is a neural network that, as the name suggests, can deal very well with sequences. The way it does it is that it takes in the previous state, S t minus 1, and feeds it into the next state, S of t. And so therefore, it can retain some of the memory of the time series. Now, if one wants to capture the temporal hierarchical structure of time series, often one takes uh, multi-layer approaches, as shown here on the right-hand side. Um, in the next slide, I'm going to show the architecture that we've been using uh, to uh, do extreme event forecasting at Uber, um, at least one of the use cases that we have, as well as um, also estimating prediction intervals. Here we're using a flavor of recurrent neural networks called long short-term memory, which we can, can retain the memory over extended periods of time. Uh, in a pre-training step, we use an encoder-decoder approach in order to do automatic feature engineering. Um, this allows 
allows us to have a scalable approach as the human need for feature engineering gets greatly diminished. We then use this learned embedding concatenated with external features such as weather, concerts, and various different other things and feed it into a prediction network. In this case, a multi-layer perceptron in order to yield a forecast. More details can be found here on the right-hand side as well as in our publication that is cited at the bottom. So let's look at some of uh, the metrics that we, we got out uh, for this new approach. Um, as we talked about, comparing to the naive approach, in this case last day, um, is something that we should be doing. So you can see this in the first column. We've also compared it to quantile regression forest and a vanilla LSTM method. The last column is our model. Uh, as you can see, we're greatly reducing the average error uh, within the new approach, uh, which seems extremely promising. In addition, we've also developed new techniques uh, to forecast uncertainty for special events, such as, for example, holidays, as you can see here. First of all, note how closely we're getting uh, to the uh, actual values in orange with the predicted values shown in blue. And then over that, we've uh, laid the 95% uh, prediction intervals. And you can see they very nicely encapsulate uh, the true values. So to close off, uh, I wanted to uh, also point you to some of the publications in our space. Uh, we've been actively publishing both blog posts as well as papers uh, that you can see here. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about the mathematics that underlies all of these forecasting techniques, I highly recommend uh, an open source book by Rob Hindman. And with that, um, I would like to close and also mention that if you're interested in doing more real world applications in forecasting at Uber, we are hiring data scientists, engineers, and product managers. And we also have an upcoming tech day uh, on April 19th, where we're gonna talk about our Uber engineering tech stack, uh, including natural language processing, use cases, and uh, more deeply about forecasting as well. Thank you very much for your attention.